Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the seventh uh, video on adaptive control. This is a course uh, taught at the Faculty of Engineering in Kay University. Uh, today we are going to derive the basic equations of the uh, recursive parameter estimation based on the least squares. In the last video we have shown uh, the basic equations and we have indicated that uh, they can be used as long as we have a system which is uh, linearly dependent on the unknown parameters. So let us uh, recall the basic uh, expression of the least square estimate the parameter estimate is theta hat uh, and that would be equal to phi transpose phi inverse times phi transpose y I'm going to define uh, a matrix P which is phi transpose phi inverse and this is normally called the covariance matrix now I can rewrite the estimate, the parameter estimate as uh, P according to its definition here by substituting for phi transpose phi inverse uh, by P uh, times and I will uh, rewrite the product phi transpose Y as summation of the columns of phi transpose times the corresponding elements in the rows of Y so I get this expression here and this summation from I equals 1 to T could be written as summation from i equal 1 to t minus 1 plus a last term which is phi transpose of phi of t times y of t similarly I can write the estimate at uh, of theta at t minus 1 by just replacing uh, t by t minus 1 in the above line here so I will get p of t minus 1 times a summation from 1 to t minus 1 phi of i times y of i now I can rearrange this equation uh, by writing the summation equals to P inverse of T minus 1 times theta hat of T minus 1. Now P minus 1 according to the definition here of the covariance matrix is phi transpose times phi. And that product could be written in terms of the columns of phi transpose and rows of phi so it would be a summation from 1 to t of the uh, columns of uh, phi transpose times the rows of uh, phi uh, and that summation if I take uh, part of it from 1 to t minus 1 would be nothing but the inverse of the matrix P at t minus 1 plus the last term which is phi of t times phi transpose of t so uh, this equation again can be rearranged so we can write the inverse of p at t minus 1 as the inverse of p at t minus phi times uh, phi transpose which is this term now by using equation number 3 and equation number 2 we can write the summation from 1 to t minus 1 as uh, I substitute here for uh, p minus 1 of t minus 1 by uh, this term which is p minus 1 at t minus phi transpose phi of t uh, times phi transpose of t so this term is nothing but uh, p uh, inverse at t minus 1 times the uh, parameter estimate theta hat at t minus 1 now if I substitute uh, expression in 4 in the uh, expression of 1 so I will get theta hat of t equals the covariance matrix P times I will substitute for the summation from equation number 4 so I get what's inside the bracket here plus the last term which is phi transpose uh, phi of t times y now we can see here if we multiply the matrix P inside the bracket here I will get here uh, P times P inverse so that would be the identity matrix and if multiplied by theta hat of T minus 1 that would give me the previous estimate of uh, theta so this will be the first term that I, I will get here and then I will have P times phi in this term and 
times four, p times phi in the uh, last term as well so I can take that as a common factor and I will uh, be uh, left with y of t minus uh, phi transpose times uh, theta so this is what I get and this is the first equation which is uh, used in the uh, recursive least square which tells me that the new estimate of theta is uh, dependent on the last estimate plus some gain multiplied by the difference between the actual measurement at the current instant minus uh, a predicted value which depends on the regressor and the previous value of the estimate now to continue our uh, derivation we need to recall a mathematical expression and this is called the matrix inversion lemma suppose that you have uh, matrices A, B, C, D uh, with appropriate dimension for the multiplication uh, so uh, the inverse of uh, the summation A plus B times C times D is given by uh, this expression so now uh, let us see uh, the covariance matrix P which is given by the inverse of uh, the covariance matrix at the previous instant plus phi times phi transpose now if we select A in this expression as P inverse at T minus 1 and B as the matrix phi C which should appear here as the identity matrix and D as phi transpose then we can calculate the inverse of uh, this expression so what we get get the last expression here now the importance of this expression is that if we are considering a single input single output system the uh, product of phi transpose p times phi would be actually a scalar and this identity matrix will be just the uh, scalar one and that means that we are avoiding here any uh, matrix inversion in our calculation of the uh, or update of the covariance matrix so this is the second equation which is used in the recursive least squares uh, now if this is the expression for p the gain of the estimator k is equal to the product of p times phi so if we multiply by phi from the right here so as we can see you get p at t minus 1 times phi and we get this second term multiplied by phi from uh, right as we can see now I can take p at t minus 1 times phi as a common uh, factor from the two terms here so I will be left with an identity matrix instead of the first term and here p at t minus 1 times phi will be out of the bracket so I'll be left with what is remaining now I can also take from uh, inside this bracket from the square bracket I can take i plus phi transpose p at t minus 1 times phi inverse can take that as a common factor so it will appear here without the inverse uh, uh, instead of i that what happened here and I will be left with minus phi transpose p at t minus 1 times phi which is this term but we can notice that we have here two uh, similar terms with uh, opposite signs so the summation will be 0 so I would be left with k equal to p at t minus 1 times phi all multiplied by i plus phi transpose p at t minus 1 times phi and that would be the last expression for the gain of the uh, recursive estimate so in our derivation of the basic equations for the recursive least squares we assumed a model given by uh, a polynomial A acting on the output Y uh, equals to a polynomial B acting on the input uh, U plus uh, a sequence which is assumed to be uh, independent and of zero mean however if instead we have here correlated sequence we call that colored uh, noise then 
Using the recursive least square as explained before will result in a bias in the estimate of the parameters of A and B which means that the values uh, of the parameters the coefficients of A and B that we are going to get will have some uh, uh, constant values added to them or uh, uh, subtracted from them so there is a bias in the values that we obtain so in order to avoid this bias there are two basic techniques in the literature uh, just like modifications uh, in the algorithm of the least squares so that we can avoid uh, uh, the bias basically what we are going to do is uh, to calculate uh, the parameters or the coefficients of the polynomial C the problem is that we cannot uh, measure the uh, sequence E so we have to estimate that value uh, as we are calculating the parameters as well so we are going to assume here uh, a model we call that model karma model uh, karma is uh, uh, standing for uh, controlled autoregressive moving average model and we're assuming uh, polynomials a b c with unknown parameters a1 to a n b1 to p m and uh, c1 to uh, c l the parameter and the regressor data vector will be uh, consisting of uh, as usual the previous value of y from yt minus 1 down to yt uh, minus na and the uh, previous values of the uh, uh, input and here we can see that we have added uh, the uh, signal epsilon and epsilon here should have been uh, the values of e that we don't measure so uh, we will see how to calculate approximate values of E to include them in the uh, regress and consequently the parameter vector theta will consist of uh, the A parameters, the B parameters and the C uh, parameters uh, and the way we calculate the uh, estimate of the uh, noise sequence is by uh, subtracting uh, the value of the current measurement y uh, minus uh, the regressive vector times the previous estimate of the parameters now how to uh, initialize the estimator uh, using uh, the recursive uh, extended list square algorithm we uh, start by choosing uh, certain values theta of 0 and covariance matrix P of 0 and a regressor at every sampling instant we measure the output Y we construct the regressor vector Phi calculate the prediction error Epsilon and then we update the covariance matrix using uh, the formula the li uh, least square formula and then update the parameters using uh, the uh, recursive estimation now we can see that this is exactly the same uh, equations that we have used for the recursive least squares so the only uh, difference here appears to be just the f definition of uh, the regressor uh, vector phi and the uh, parameters uh, theta another alternative uh, in uh, applying uh, the uh, recursive least square is uh, actually by uh, redefining the sequence uh, to be to estimate e to be eta instead of epsilon and the difference here is that instead of using the previous value of the estimate theta we use the current value of theta to uh, define the uh, or to estimate the unmeasured sequence of noise in that case the regressor will consist of the y measurements the input measurements and the eta values as calculated uh, above here Th the parameter vector is the same as before and we still use the same uh, recursive least square uh, equations to estimate the parameters <coughs>